Hello everyone, it's Tom with the SS Motion back here again today, and today we're taking a look at another Call of Duty Mega Block set. Today we are taking a look at set number 06878, Nuketown. It's for ages 12 and up, it includes 689 pieces, and it retails for about 39.99 here in the UK. If I give you a quick pan, you can see there is a lot to this set. Which is why we are not on my desk today, we're actually down in the depths of the UNSC area within my display. Okay, so before we take a look at the set, we're going to take a look at the figures. And I'm actually going to start with what aren't really figures, but are mannequins. So we get two of these Nuketown man mannequins. One female mannequin. One male mannequin. Representing nicely the mannequins on the map. And these can actually peg onto blocks as you can see there. So you can actually attach them to something quite nicely. As well as the two mannequins we get two figures. We get one figure in a brown kind of bomber jacket. With a kind of grey vest. A silver concussion grenade. Black leg strap and a burgundy ammo pouch. And his helmet's black and he comes with a silver AK-47. And we then also get this guy, who's actually very cool, I like him. Who comes with a green upper body and tactical camo. Which is what I believe the name for this is. Uh, this is, is, sorry. That's pretty poor grammar. Uh, we have the nice helmeted head. This is probably my favourite of the head sculpts we've got so far. A tan coloured scout vest with a, uh, I think that's a kind of brownie ammo pouch. And that's actually on the wrong way, so if we twist that round, there you go. Then black trousers with a burgundy leg strap. And a black knife. And he includes a black sniper rifle. I feel as though the sniper rifle was used a lot within um, last year's Summer Wave to kind of compensate for the fact that that was the first time it was introduced. Because it's been used frequently since then. So taking a look at the set itself. We'll take a look at it in order of build. I will say in terms of the two main parts. But we'll take a look at all of the smaller elements first. So firstly we get this small street sign. Quite a nice design for it. it. Says Latchkey Road 5824 and Trinity Avenue 6068. And I think these are the actual names of the road on the map itself, although I'd have to check that. But that's quite nice. We then get a little letterbox or post box for you guys with a nice green uh, grass base. And this, as you can see, actually has two printed blocks that say Mason, so that's a very nice detail. I'm not actually sure if that's a detail that's there on the map itself, but that's nice regardless. We then get a small wooden fence, which is quite nice. Uh, it's not really important, it's just nice to have it as an additional aesthetic piece. I mean, you could build it up there on the house to add some extra detail to it. Just things like that to really add more depth to the structure. We then get this nice Nuketown town. This is a uh, Nuketown sign. This is very symbolic. A lot of nice detail here. These are actually pieces of card that are secured into place. Get some nice rounded balls on the top. A fallout shelter printed piece. And all the nice printed details that you really would come to expect from a Call of Duty set. And then lastly, for the smaller elements, we get this small... A uh, barbed wire tank trap, which is very nice. As you can see, it stretches nicely. Can balance it fairly well. It doesn't stand all that great. But it is an accurate look to the kind of barbed wire defences that would have been used in the time era that this set is set in. So in terms of when this set is set, this is the variant of Nuketown from Black Ops 1. So this is in the 60s onwards, I would say. And for what it is, it is a very nice set, it is a very nice representation of it for the scale they've gone to. Before we take a look at the house, we're going to take a look at the tower. 
So you can see here this nice freestanding uh, nuke countdown tower. It's very nice. A little bit of space up here to display a figure. Some nice framework throughout. Unfortunately, a lot of the pieces on this were missing to finish mine off. But it doesn't bother me too much as this piece of structure isn't crucial. Like you can see here, I was missing the pieces to get this reaching across fully. And I was actually missing the pieces to build the second one of those. But it doesn't bother me too much. And for what it's trying to achieve, it is nice. I mean, the clock's made of different pieces, which is a nice touch. But I just kind of feel like the actual structure itself is very hard to assemble accurately. And it is incredibly flimsy, like, if you look at it there, it's not very strong at all. So that is the Newton clock structure. It's nice to get some elevation to it. It's nice that there's these kind of handholds along it, which you can have a figure hold. But honestly, I really feel like it was an unnecessary addition. And in the end, it's probably the one thing I say I really do not like about this set. The designers did try to capture the look. But I think with the method they used, they're using a lot of small parts, it just really didn't pay off. So looking at the building itself now, we'll bring it forward. You can see the ground floor. We have a nice window here. I'm not actually sure if this is a new piece, but it's very nice. The door, a lot of nice texture work. I particularly like the textures used down here to really create that stone base feeling. Uh, we have a little plant arrangement here which is quite nice and then this leading up the side up here onto this kind of little almost terrace area I guess is what you would call it we have the green throughout to highlight that this is on grass and then to the side we have this nice uh, brown staircase that leads up onto this platform nice detailing with the railings here and we do of course have another doorway into the building there and then a doorway to the top floor here this was a very nice detail, they actually managed to get the guttering in, which is something I wasn't expecting, so I was very impressed with that. And then again, moving forward to the front, a lot of nice texture work with the windows here actually represented by fragments of glass, which is quite cool. Uh, as if they've been shut out, knocking the roof off there to let some more light in. We can then see the roof itself is basically just two big plates held together with some mountains to mount it at an angle. So that's quite cool. It's removable, obviously. It doesn't really sit that securely. It does fall off a lot, but for what it is, it's nice and it's necessary to get the angle work. And if we twist it around, we can see not really much depth to the inside at all or depth on this wall. It's very much left to your imagination. I mean, you've got enough space to maybe pose a figure on the top floor here. But there's really not much display space at all inside. And it really kind of follows the traditional building block um, building design of kind of creating a facade of a building. And what I mean by that is it's a building which is pretty much designed to look like a building from the outside. But it actually has very little playability on the inside. But for what it is, it is nice. And I do feel like it is an accurate representation of the source material. Which is always nice to see at such a small scale. So we will line everything back up in the shop for you. And I will give you my final thoughts on the Nuketown uh, set. So as we line all the elements up, you can see there are a lot of different elements that we bring into play here. Which is very nice. Uh, for the price that you pay, which is £40 approximately. It is very nice. You do get a lot of nice different elements with it. And it is nice to get a building. The mannequins are quite cool. And there's a lot of different elements which really do go into it to bring it to life as a faithful recreation of the map itself. Um, would I recommend the set is difficult. I think it is a very nice structure. It's definitely worth picking up if you can find a way to fill it into something like a city mock. But... Overall, I'd say you're not missing out if you don't buy this set. Don't get me wrong, it is a very nice set, but I think flaws with things like the clock tower uh, do kind of weigh it down a little bit. That said, it is fantastic value for money with all you get. It really does have the stage presence of something a lot bigger than it actually is. And I do feel like you would be making a worthwhile investment by buying it if you want something uh, you can display a few figures around. Don't buy this as a house that you can display figures in. 
if you're buying it as a scenery piece to have in the background, then by all means go for it. It's definitely worth it. So this has been another review with me, Tom, from the SS Motion. I hope you've enjoyed this one, guys. I have had this set for about a week, so I'm sorry it's taken so long to get the review out. I've just been quite busy because I've got GCSEs coming up now, so it's really starting to break down into the re revision, revision, revision like crazy, basically. Uh, but with that said, this has been a review uh, with me, Tom. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please remember to like, favourite and subscribe. And as always guys, I hope you have a great week.